Hello everyone, this is Bradley Wistens with the results of the Monte Carlo Kerbling Challenge. In a previous video, I asked challengers to fly down a river course I specified, and I encouraged them to do so in a variety of ways. For this video, I've put together a top 10 list of some of the most fascinating submissions. Due to the large number of quality submissions and the subjective nature of the challenge, judging was extremely difficult. I factored not only the time the mission was completed in, but also additional criteria added, creativity, and the overall look of the mission. Before I do the top 10, I want to feature a very impressive submission from Inter's Odyssey. This really deserves to be in the top 10, but it was a really straightforward approach and that'll help me set up this video and show you what the course is like and give some context for the missions to come. In the video prompt to this challenge, I took a Twin Panther engine jet through the course and Inter has also done the course with a Twin Panther engine jet, so I thought I would make this a race and show them head to head. On the top will be Inter's Odyssey, who didn't provide a title for this craft, and on the bottom will be my own run with Bill's Panther Jet Fighter. As we enter the course, I'm going about 300 meters per second faster, and as we go through the first corner, I maintain a little bit more speed, and as a result, I have a pretty strong lead by the time we reach the second corner. However, after this corner, there's a long straight section, and he has less wing area, which gives him less drag and allows him to reach a lot higher speeds. By the time we cross over the first obstacle, he's already passing me, and he continues to increase his lead over the rest of the course. I do gain a little bit of time through the corkscrew, but other than that, he's pretty much gaining on me the rest of the run, and he crosses the finish line in a time of 4 minutes and 1 second, compared to 4 minutes and 22 seconds for my run. This is a difference of 21 seconds, and while I didn't pull out all the stops for my run, I figured that doing this mission in 4 minutes would be pretty difficult, and the fact that he was able to do this in this time, using only Panther engines, is really incredible. So this race should have given us an idea of what the course looks like, and a context for how fast the runs we're about to see are. Kicking off the top 10 at number 10 is Boom Shockle with the Electric Paraglider. This craft uses a stock propeller engine powered by the reaction wheels and a Kerbal's parachute. It isn't the fastest, parachutes are not a great way to go fast, and it takes almost an hour to complete the course at a time of 55 minutes and 21 seconds. First off, I'm impressed that he was able to make a tiny stock propeller engine that lasted that long without breaking itself, and also that he did it in one shot because I can't imagine the pain of getting almost to the end of this run, making a tiny error, and having to do the whole thing again. A very amusing run and a very unique approach and a great job overall. At number nine in this list is Peach Dragon with the K18T Striker. Most of this run is completed at transonic speed, which makes this not nearly as fast as some of the other jets, but there's a lot of criteria that was added to this submission that really increases the degree of difficulty. Firstly, he did the entire run in IVA view, decreasing his visibility and making it a lot harder to avoid cliff-assisted spontaneous disassembly. And he also used G limits and didn't even go over 5.5 Gs, which is really difficult considering how twisty this course is. Lastly, he successfully completed it under the low altitude course ceiling, which decreases the course ceiling throughout the course by 200 meters. It's really the combination of all these criteria that makes this mission so impressive. He crosses the finish line in a time of 10 minutes and 12 seconds, which is still very fast and requires you to have very precise flying, despite all of the difficulty that he's added. At number 8 on this list is Sam Pollard with the Challenger Boat. As the name suggests, this is literally a boat. Due to the obstacles in the course, he does require wings and jet engines to fly over those, but the rest of the run is completed in the water. He manages to reach speeds in the water of almost 100 meters per second, which is pretty impressive considering the real-life water speed record is only at around 142 meters per second, and that's in a straight line with an extremely specialized craft. Doing high speeds in the water in real life is extremely dangerous, so I'm glad that he only did this in KSP. For number 7 on this list, I'm going to do another head-to-head -head race. It's going to be Voldiv in the ZR1 Fennec versus Sergeant Charlie and the Aris 4P. These are really totally different submissions. Voldov's was the fastest submission that successfully completed the low altitude course, and Sergeant Charlie's submission was the fastest submission that used the in-cockpit view as well as pilot g-force limits. 
While these aren't in direct competition, the end result was a very similar time, and it should be interesting to see how the runs compare. Voldov enters the course faster and maintains a little bit more speed around the first corner, and as a result is about two seconds ahead at the apex of the second corner. Throughout most of the run, we have a back and forth action where Sergeant Charlie is gaining some time on the straightways and then losing some time through the corners. This is partly because, due to the pilot G-force limits, Sergeant Charlie has to slow down more for the corners, and by the time they reach the entrance to the corkscrew, he's about 19 seconds behind. However, the low altitude course ceiling requires a very twisty line through the corkscrew, costing Vold of some time, and on the exit of the corkscrew, Sergeant Charlie has gained about 5 seconds back. This race may appear to be a foregone conclusion since Sergeant Charlie is still 14 seconds back, but during the final high speed section, the lower drag of his plane really pays off, and he's gaining on Voldov at a rate of 100 to 200 meters per second. However, the finish line is coming up, and it turns into a real close race, and when they cross the finish line, Voldov is just one second ahead. A really close race, considering the totally different approaches that they used. Again, this wasn't really a competition, because neither of them was going purely for time, and they used totally different criteria, but it was really interesting to see how these stacked up. At number 6 on this list is Inter's Odyssey with none other than the USS Enterprise. I'm not quite sure what to make of this submission, but I do know that it's been more than a week since I've seen it now and I haven't stopped laughing yet. It doesn't manage to go very fast and due to the use of Juno engines caps out at about 90 meters per second, I believe this is a little bit slower than the real USS Enterprise and I do suggest that he looks into alternative propulsion for this and it ends up finishing in a time of 31 minutes and 56 seconds, but a little suffering is good for the soul. I will note that despite the size and the strange shape of this, it seems to handle fairly well, so my hat's off to enter for this one. Number five in this list is going to be another head-to-head -head race between the two fastest submissions I received, which were Pelican Antics with the Moth and Brian Folkert with another mysteriously untitled plane. As with the previous race, this is not a direct competition because different criteria was used. Both of them have stock planes, but Pelican Antics uses part clipping to decrease drag, and Brian Folkert uses infinite feel to decrease mass. So let's see if lower mass or lower drag is more important. Course entry is at about the same speed, but Brian Folkert manages to maintain more speed through the first corner, and as a result is about 3 seconds ahead at the apex of the second corner. Brian then also reaches an unbelievable speed on the long straight after this corner, hitting more than 1600 meters per second, and is about 6 seconds ahead when they pass over the first obstacle. The two racers are roughly equivalent in speed through the high speed section through the obstacles, maintaining a difference of about 6 seconds. They're also about equal through the low speed twisty section, and are still about 6 seconds apart when they enter the long parabolic corner. Both of them are extremely quick through the long high speed corner. Pelican gains about one second back, and is about five seconds behind as they enter the corkscrew. Pelican does a great job through the corkscrew, and is only about two seconds behind on exiting this section. Through the final section with the high speed sweeping turns, Pelican seems to have a slight advantage, and is gaining slowly on Brian as they approach the finish line. They're neck and neck as they exit the river. Pelican gets a little bit better angle on leaving and hits the water first, finishing in a time of 2 minutes and 43 seconds, compared to Brian's 2 minutes and 44 seconds. As mentioned ahead of this, these are the two fastest submissions I received. I did get another email from Brian after the submission deadline indicating that he had actually flown this even faster in a time of 2 minutes and 24 seconds. This was too late to reach this compilation, but I will include a link to it in the video description. Number four on this list is Jerry RSA with the Speed Prop V22. I received a lot of stock prop submissions and this was the fastest of all of them. And it also completed the course at an incredibly low altitude and is well under the low altitude course ceiling throughout the run. This run really epitomizes the philosophy of fly low, fly fast, and it's just above the water and right next to the cliff faces and right above the obstacles as it passes over them. It also has a really high top speed for a stock propeller craft that doesn't use any exploitative part occlusion. If you're interested in stock propeller KSP planes at all, I really recommend watching this video in its entirety. For number three in this list, we're going to have another head-to-head -head race, this time between Space Coyote with the Fast Boy 2 
and Squiddy with the Sprinter. This race is going to be a little bit slower than the one we saw for number 5. Both of these submitters used whip the Whiplash engine, which has a little bit lower top end than the Rapier engine, and they also used all stock physics and no use of part clipping. As a note before we begin, I learned here that in addition to being a master of the stock propeller, Squiddy is also the smoothest keyboard pilot I've ever seen. On the course entry, Space Coyote is about 500 meters per second faster than Squiddy, and he does a great job at keeping the speed through the first corner, and as a result has a very intimidating lead of about 7 seconds at the apex of the second corner. This lead is maintained through the high speed section of the course, and the lead is still about 7 seconds when they pass over the second obstacle. At this point, Squiddy manages to maintain a kerbal crushing amount of speed around the tight right hander, gaining about 3 seconds and is only 4 seconds behind at the left hander that looks like a right hander. Both of them are extremely quick through the low speed twisty section, but Squiddy does manage to gain another 2 seconds back and is about 2 seconds behind at the entry to the long parabolic corner. Through the long high speed corner, the whiplash engine definitely starts to run out of power. Space Coyote has three of them, giving him a little bit more thrust for drag, and he gains another second back and is about three seconds ahead on the entry to the corkscrew. Space Coyote is fast through this section, but Squiddy somehow manages to maintain about 300 more meters per second than any other submission I received through this section, staying at about 1100 meters per second even during the tightest part. This means that on the exit, he's actually two seconds ahead. However, during the final high speed section, it's Space Coyote that's maintaining a little bit more speed through the corners, and he is slowly gaining back on Squiddy as they approach the finish line, but he does run out of room, and Squiddy passes over the finish line one second ahead of him in a time of 2 minutes and 51 seconds for Squiddy, and 2 minutes and 52 seconds for Space Coyote. These are extremely impressive times regardless of the criteria, and the fact that they were achieved with fully stock physics, using the Whiplash engine, and no part clipping is really impressive. And number two in this list, we're going to see more stages than in the rest of this video put together. Boom Shockle completes the course using 20 stages of SRB insanity. He claims that the SRBs consist entirely of sustainably sourced sugar and potassium nitrate, and as a result, he calls this the environmentally friendly racer. I can't confirm these claims of environmental friendliness. It doesn't look like it to me, but who am I to doubt the guy? This isn't the fastest submission, he completed the course in 13 minutes and 1 second, but it is definitely the most Kerbal submission. If you look at what he's done here, what he's done is just keep adding more stages and more control surfaces until the thing worked. I really lack the words to explain how deliciously absurd this is, so I have to give him number 2 on this list, as well as the inaugural More Boosters Award. In a dramatic finish, he runs out of fuel and is forced to glide the rest of the way to the finish line. I will be sending inspectors to check if he in fact used the sustainably sourced fuel that he claimed. Also, I require that if I ever do a similar challenge with a longer course, that Boom Shockle submits an entry using only solid rocket boosters, using as many stages as necessary to get it done. And that makes it time to announce number one on this list and the grand winner of the challenge. At number one in this list is Arv Kramer with a beautiful and functional stock helicopter. This helicopter has two turboprop powered contra rotating rotors and jet engines for forward movement. When he first sent me this, he had managed to make it about 10 minutes into the run before the rotors glitched out and just broke everything. This was already extremely impressive and probably would have made the top 10 because stock props are notoriously unreliable especially when you're trying to do something complicated like this, and then when you add on the tight corners on top of that, it's almost impossible. However, he somehow managed to go back and get the helicopter to function for the entirety of the 41 minute and 22 second run. This is a little bit slower than James T. Kirk's entry, but still required him to go about 70 meters per second, which is pretty fast considering the complexity of what the rotors need to do. This helicopter also looks great. I'm really impressed how he managed to get the rotors to work reliably without any ridiculous and unrealistic looking part clipping. He also manages to complete the entirety of the run under the low altitude course ceiling. This was a rare achievement and was only successfully completed by five of the submissions I received. That he managed to do this with a helicopter that I was, I'm sure was difficult to control adds even more to the degree of difficulty of what he's doing. Upon seeing this video, my eyebrows flew off my face and into the apartment above. 
So I officially announced that RF Kramer is the grand winner of this challenge. Lastly, I want to thank everyone who participated in this challenge. The quality and the quantity of the submissions I received was far greater than anything I could have expected. I received about 50 in all, and there's a ton of them that are incredibly impressive that were not featured in this video. Please check out the final challenge report in the description of this video if you want to see more of them. At some point in the near future, I intend to transition this challenge into an ongoing challenge on the Kerbal Space Program forums. There'll be a link to that in the description as well when it's up. Thank you everyone very much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one.